It's time for our special feature, which happens more or less sometime in the middle of the weekly Ask a CFO show. And it's always having to do with some topic that just keeps rearing its head during a given week. And there's always something. And this week, the topic is trust and faith. And it's not the only topic that reared its head several times this week, but it's a good one. And I have a visual because this has popped up so many times for me. And I use my touch screen to scribble so many, this, this framework so many times that this, this real um, solid framework started to evolve. And I'm gonna share that with you today. And in fact, um, I'm gonna share my screen with you. So hang on a second while I do just that. And here we go, share screen and kaboom and i'm still watching the comments so i want you to write in and tell me that you can see my screen i want to make sure that you you all can see it before i start talking about it like you can actually see it i think you it looks like you can see it just write in something tell me that you can see my screen and i'm going to take you through this framework which is um i didn't get this from someplace this is this is uh, Jamie Sorst. Um, what I have learned, oh, great, Vanessa, thank you. What I have learned through so many observations and inquiries is the role of trust, faith, and mistrust in a business relationship. And there's a financial value for those things. And I wanna take you through the basic framework of what happens. And I don't, I don't mean basic in the sense of dumbed down, because you know I don't do that. I mean, yeah, it is an original. Thanks, Elisa. I mean basic in the sense of core. Like this is fundamental. And when we're not aware of this, then we don't have an opportunity to create something really special. Instead, when something goes wrong, we either struggle with it, or we're just like in the doghouse. So let's go through it. So when when a relate when a new business relationship kicks off, everybody's feeling the glow, right? Like you're in the honeymoon period. And I would assert that at this point in the business relationship, it is not a matter of trust. It's a matter of faith. And I say that out of the way that I personally define faith and trust. The way that I personally define faith and trust isn't right, isn't true. It's useful. <laughs> it's useful to me. And I have often found that when someone confuses faith and trust, they really get to a lot of unworkability, a lot of frustration, and a lot of, of solving of and dealing with things instead of just being out there unleashed in the world being powerful making a difference i define faith as a choice when you start doing business with somebody if they're your customer if they're your vendor if they're whoever they are an employee an employer you're taking a leap of faith you're making a choice in the face of no evidence or very little evidence you're choosing mia welcome so glad to have you here. We were just talking about choosing. You choose. And not necessarily because you have a pile of evidence or, or, or any kind of history behind you. At some point, you just choose. You choose because you choose. And that's a leap of faith at the beginning of a relationship. You don't require evidence for that. I define trust as something that has been earned through performance through consistent performance over time. So let's take a look at what happens after the honeymoon period. Are we going to grow in trust when we have consistent performance over time, or are we going to lapse into mistrust? So let's see what happens. If we move in the direction of trust, how do we get there? Like you don't just magically choose to trust, like, oh, you know what, I just trust you. No, that's not trust, that's faith. And these distinctions are important because they're functional here. If you have, if you keep your promises, if the other parties keep their promises, not just their promises, but as expected and when expected, like I'll get you these financial statements, you know, eventually. 
Does that fly? Does that build trust? No. Are they going to be like, this is wonderful. Let's continue our business relationship only because we just believe deep down that you have the power to produce financial statements. <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> so promises are kept, not just by service providers, but by all parties. That builds trust all around in a relationship. And that relationship then also has a higher financial value. There's less loss when people are keeping their promises. There's less financial loss. There's less time loss. You don't have to follow up with somebody 17 times. You're learning to, they, ha they have earned your trust. You know that when they said they're gonna do it, they're gonna do it. That means you can use your time in other ways like making money. And that's one of the many ways that tr high trust in a relationship increases the financial value. And don't forget from the perspective of a service provider, if you know that if your clients know rock solid that they can count on you, they're gonna pay more for your services than they would pay for somebody you know, like cheap that they can't count on. Ultimately, if you're paying somebody that, that you really can't count on, you might as well just take your money and flush it down the toilet. So there is a high financial, a higher financial value the more there's trust in a relationship. You recognize a pattern of timely completion, trust grows, and then kaboom, delight. Everybody's delighted. Everybody's expectations are exceeded. That's what happens at the top levels here. If at some point there's an out of integrity divot, and by integrity, I don't mean honesty. I mean like something happens different from how it was designed then, right, we're, we're going down here. What do you do? Like, oops, I made a mistake. You, a client, a vendor, an employee, somebody did something outside of what was promised. You either, you have a choice. You can rationalize or you can avoid that. Don't do that. You're trying to do that because it makes you look good. It is actually making you look even worse. Chasing after looking good does not increase trust and it not, does not increase the financial value of the relationship. If you do that, you're gonna eventually get down here where there's just a pattern of, of being out of the design of the relationship. However, when that mistake happens, if you pledge to, to um, engage in specific time-based activities, they can restore trust and in a game of shoots and ladders up here, kaboom, you can get back up there. However, if that becomes your pattern, I'm out of integrity, I do something other than what we agreed to, and then boom, 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 I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna earn your trust again. But then that becomes your pattern. Like I torch something, but then I swear I work really hard to earn your trust again. That, that's what I call a divot restoration loop. And it, you know what, that gets you in the doghouse too and you never get up here. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I still wanna answer uh, a question that was asked. I wanna make sure to get that handled and I bet it's a great question, I haven't read it yet. Um, but it came from Vanessa, so I know it's gonna be awesome. So I wanted to share that framework with you today because I do find it to be exceptionally powerful that there is a financial relationship between trust and, uh, and mistrust and faith right there in the middle. So let me see what um, what Vanessa, what question Vanessa asked. And I love it. I love that so many people are still with me after this, this long share. I hope it serves you. I hope it serves you well in your business and, and in any area of your life in which, um, in which you would like to explore faith and trust, mistrust, and the, the financial value and the value of other resources as well, like time. <laughs> 